Hey y'all, hi. So I'm finally filming this highly requested video about clothes that work for a changing body. The requests have come on the heels of my many videos about fashion that really center longevity and versatility in my personal wardrobe value system. I talk a lot about wanting my clothes to be investment pieces or wear forever pieces and being willing to spend a bit more and buy fewer nicer things in order to build that type of closet. A lot of us want this, but also our bodies change over time. For some of us, it's just a slow process of minor evolution as we age. For some of us, it's a huge permanent and sometimes sudden transformation, maybe from illness or injury. For some of us, it's a constant seesaw of fluctuations over the course of an entire life. I've personally experienced bouts of some weight gain and weight loss for various reasons since I was a teen. I'm currently bigger all over than I've ever been in my entire life because of pregnancy, and I really don't know what the future has in store for the size and shape of my body. So so how do you curate a forever wardrobe when your body isn't necessarily a forever body? I've been thinking about this a lot, and today I have a handful of specific, practical, actionable ideas to share, all of which are widely applicable. If you're new and you like this, definitely check out my fashion videos playlist, which I'll link down below and in the cards. And you know, maybe consider subscribing. And now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So the first concept on my list is maybe the one that seems the most obvious at the outset, but I have some specific suggestions about it that might be a little less obvious. The idea here, the first idea, is to look for garments with girth versatility. The most obvious version of this, the thought that springs immediately to mind, is the stretchy waistband. Waistbands that have a pretty wide range in terms of how far they stretch and have kind of a soft stretch so that they won't become increasingly less comfortable as they stretch more. But in my mind, a stretchy waistband alone won't help you when you're building a wardrobe of forever pieces. For a really beautiful garment to be versatile and long lasting because of this quality, it's also key that the fabric that flows from the waistband in any direction be generous and accommodating. So in practical terms, that translates to garments that have a fit and flow silhouette on which the fit it portion is secured by a softly stretchy elastic. And indeed, when I started gaining weight over this past winter, the pants that held out the longest, and some of them I'm still wearing, were pants like this, cotton harem pants with ruched waistbands, my linen fox palazzo pants, the linen fox clementine pant, pants from the brand Rusha held out for a pretty long time. I'll link all of that below, and I'll link several versions of this type of thing in the description box down below. The fit and flow idea doesn't just apply to pants either. Some dresses come in this silhouette with generous flowy fabric on the top and on the bottom and a soft elastic binding at the waist. The key is that the flow part has enough room to accommodate change and that the fit part has enough stretch and enough bounce back to accommodate change. I've gotten a lot of mileage myself out of some thrift shop and vintage dresses that happen to have this silhouette, but again, I'll track down a few currently available options and link them. So girth versatility can come in this obvious form, the form of stretchy waistbands, but it can also come in another form that I absolutely love, which is the wrap silhouette. One of my absolute favorite clothing acquisitions this year was the Ozma Dance Wrap top. It's made out of raw silk jersey. <laughs> so beautiful. So it has a soft drape and a slight stretch that helps it mold to the figure however it's worn. But it is not that. It is the wrap design of this top that makes it so incredibly versatile. I am several inches bigger around here than I was, and this top just fits beautifully. And I know that it will still fit just as beautifully if I go back to being smaller. 
It doesn't have to stretch. The fabric doesn't have to stretch to adjust, which would maybe make it strained when I'm at my biggest or saggy when I'm at my smallest. But instead of that, I can adjust the actual fit, the girth of the entire garment when I tie it on so that it fits perfectly no matter what. Wrap dresses can function in the same way as long as they have enough material. Really, as long as they're true wrap dresses instead of like a faux wrap design. I think of the iconic Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress, a beautiful investment piece for a work wardrobe if you have an ever-changing body. And again, I think that this silhouette is versatile in the most polished way, in the way that has the most longevity, when it's not being required for the fabric itself to stretch dramatically, but rather it's the design of the garment that has, again, girth versatility that's adjustable. And then a third type of garment that has incredible natural girth versatility is a bias cut skirt or dress. When a drapey woven fabric is hanging on the bias, meaning diagonally, so that the warp and weft of the fibers are this way rather than this way, rather than being horizontally and vertically aligned. Then the garment has this incredible natural ability to expand and adjust that keeps the garment skimming over the body at an enormous range of sizes. Slip dresses and slip skirts are almost always cut on the bias. I have a vintage slip skirt that I got at a thrift shop for just a couple of dollars this year. I've been wearing it for months now and I can't believe that it still fits me. The waistband has some elastic in it, so that's important, but its real superpower is the bias cut because it doesn't just keep fitting, it keeps looking good on me the way that it fits. Luckily, the market is flooded with these right now because they're very on trend. We have a glut of choices. I've been lusting after the Jenny Kane slip dresses, maybe in investment piece for next year for me. But there are options at all price points and lots of things like this available in thrift shops and secondhand as well. You just have to make sure that the place where it is binding, so the straps and neckline on a dress and the waistband on a skirt, you have to make sure that that measurement is loose enough or stretchy enough not to limit you. But when it comes to the rest of it, it will accommodate dramatically and keep looking and feeling like the right size even as you change. So those are all of my suggestions for girth versatility, stretchy waistbands, fit and flow, wrap silhouettes, and bias cut skirts and dresses. Overarching concept number two for these versatile wardrobe staples is drape. Look for fabrics that drape elegantly no matter what is inside them. So relaxed wovens like linen and raw silk instead of stiff or starchy wovens like poplin and cotton lawn. If you become a bit smaller and some of your button-down shirts become a bit oversized. An oversized button down in a fabric with a fluid drape is going to look so much better than an oversized button down in a fabric with a stiff drape. Likewise, if the drape is fluid, when you're filling it out a bit more, a fluid fabric will handle your curves much better than a stiff fabric will. This is another case in which I think stretch is not all it's cracked up to be. There are a lot of tailored shirts on the market made of stretch cotton poplin. And yes, that will accommodate a little bit, maybe like a size or a half size. But if it becomes palpably too small, it will be so uncomfortable. And if it becomes palpably too big, it will truly look wrong. A well-cut shirt in a drapey fabric can handle so much more change and still look good. My two best personal examples for drape as the key element in longevity of a garment are these. The Ozma Billy dress, which is not bias cut, not a wrap silhouette, not fit and flow, so does not have classic girth versatility, is probably the most worn garment in my wardrobe right now. It just drapes beautifully over the body no matter what. And because of that drape, it's going to look gorgeous even if I go back to being a size six or eight someday. 
If that happens, the armholes might be a little bit lower, the neckline might drop a little bit lower, but the drape of the fabric will cause the shape of the dress to adjust so that it doesn't look wrong. And the second example is this. I found this amazing Eileen Fisher shirt at a thrift shop. I think I've figured out that it's the Eileen Fisher handkerchief linen shirt. That's like the technical name. The one that I found in the shop was white and in size large. It fits beautifully right now. And I can just tell that I'll be wearing it forever, even if it becomes slightly oversized or even quite oversized on me. Or if I gain more weight someday and fill it out more. So beautiful, so versatile. I'm thinking about buying it in black as well someday. That's on my like long long-term wish list. If it was the same shirt, but in like a crisp cotton shirting, which Eileen Fisher does make, you know, it would still be a really nice shirt. It would just have much narrower limits. So we have girth versatility, we have drape, and my third and maybe most fun suggestion is to look for texture. Textured fabrics like crinkle cotton, pleats, and plisse have a lot of structural versatility, meaning that they can expand and contract quite a bit without the fibers of the fabrics themselves straining when they're expanded or drooping when they're contracted. And garments designed with textured fabrics like these, they often have a kind of intentional volume that helps the garment to keep its character and the integrity of its drama, even when it's fitting a variety of bodies or fitting the same body in a variety of ways. Some months ago, I found this pair of pleated silk cotton pants at a consignment shop. They're from a brand I had never heard of. I think the brand is called Greasus. Greasus? I'll track it down, I'll link it. But these pants have been amazing to wear as my body has changed shape. The waistband is elastic, which is important, but these pants are much more versatile even than other elastic waisted pants because the pleats are so accommodating. Really, it's that they look polished. The pleats, so the gar the whole garment, looks polished and intentional no matter how it fits. I've also recently become aware of this incredibly innovative brand called Petite Pli, which originally designed a fabric that expands because they wanted to make kids' clothes that would grow with the kid. They did that, and now they're just starting to branch out into adult clothing. And you can see that texture is the main functioning principle here. Of course, there's Issei Mayaki's famous line of pleated clothing, pleats please. If you're into super high-end clothes with a slightly avant-garde twist, that is worth checking out. And on the other end, Koss did a bunch of pleated and plissé stuff this season, which I will also link. Crinkle cotton and other crinkle fabrics, but I really love crinkle cotton, Crinkle cotton has maybe a slightly less dramatic capacity to expand than full-on pleats, but it also might come in more versatile pieces and be more breathable. One drawback of plisse is that it tends to be a synthetic fabric. Not all the time, but most of the time. Crinkle cotton is a subtler way to take advantage of the versatility of texture. Some of it, some crinkle cotton is really actually quite expanding, like chaotic accordion in all directions. Some of it's more of just a slight light surface texture. But either way, my experience is that the intentional volume of a fabric surface just helps the garment look and feel that much more like it's fitting right, even if the particulars of how it sits on your frame have changed. So those are my three suggestions for today. Garments with various kinds of girth versatility, garments with a fluid drape, and garments with intentional texture all have potential to be reliable cornerstones in a forever wardrobe, even though, honestly, nobody's body stays the same. But this was just my first crack at this topic. I might revisit it if I have more ideas, and of course, I can't wait to see what you have to contribute in the comments on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be subscribed. Also, don't forget to check out my fashion playlist or some of my other fashion videos. And don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.